So in this short video, I'm going to explain how to calculate relative formula mass, and we're going to look at practicing that. In order to be able to calculate relative formula mass, you already need to be happy and confident with what's meant by relative atomic mass. So the relative atomic mass is the larger of the two numbers that you find on the periodic table. So on this AQA GCSE periodic table, you'll see there's a little key here, and it does tell you that the number at the top is the relative formula mass. That's always compared to carbon-12, type of carbon that weighs 12 grams per mole. So relative atomic mass is a number that you can read straight off your periodic table, and you're going to need that information in order to be able to calculate relative formula mass. So I have 10 questions here, and for each question, the very first thing I'm going to need to do is to find out the relative atomic mass of the different elements that are in the compound. So for the first one, I need carbon, which I can see as 12, and hydrogen, which I can see as 1. Now I can see from the formula that there are two atoms of carbon and there are six atoms of hydrogen. So I need to count carbon twice and I need to count hydrogen six times. So for the second question, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to refer to my periodic table and find that the mass of aluminium is 27 and the mass of oxygen is 16. Again, I have to take into account the fact that there are two atoms of aluminium for every three atoms of oxygen in this formula. Now for my next one, I'm back to carbon and hydrogen. And the important thing to bear in mind, and the mistake that sometimes people make, is that this 4 here only represents the numbers of hydrogen. It doesn't say anything about the number of carbon. And that's always true when you've got these small subscript numbers. They only refer to the element directly to the left. So once again, I've got carbon with a mass of 12. Hydrogen with a mass of 1. And even when you've only got 1 of a certain element, I would still do the bracket and put the numbers in it, just because it tends to avoid you making a silly mistake later on, particularly when you have a more complicated question. So at this point, if you pause the video and have a go at number 4 and number 5 on your own, just to check that you know what you're doing. Now these next five questions are slightly more complicated because the formulae involve brackets. Now if you're not very confident about using brackets, what I would suggest you do is actually write it out longhand. So this calcium hydroxide here we can turn into and for that first one you probably don't need to do that, but for these slightly more complicated ones later down once you know what you're doing, they are really straightforward, but it's just really easy when you're stressed in an exam to find yourself making a silly mistake and maybe only counting one of the things in the brackets or maybe adding them together instead of multiplying them. So writing it out in longhand is just going to stop you from doing that. So we're going to go through exactly the same process. What are the relative atomic masses? And then multiplying them up. See, I've written it out in full, even though there's only one calcium. 1 times 40, which is the relative atomic mass of calcium, 2 times 16 because I've got 2 oxygens, and then 2 times 1 because I've got 2 hydrogens, which gives me an overall mass of 74. Question number 7, we've got magnesium has got a relative atomic mass of 24, nitrogen 14, oxygen 16. 
As you can see, again, I've written it out in full. I cannot tell you how many times I've marked a question like this, and a student here has said that there are five oxygens. When you can see quite clearly if you write it out, we've got three oxygens and then another three. So we can then work it through one atom of magnesium for every two atoms of nitrogen and six in total of oxygen. If I add those all up, I'm going to get 148. So if at this point you now pause it, work out the last three, and then we'll see if you and I get the same answers. Hopefully now, if you check your answers for the last three, you're also going to have 342, 202, and 76. And I expect you can now also see why it's quite so important to write the calculation out in full, because it's really, really easy to lose your way in one of those. So if you're now happy and successful and confident doing those, you're now ready to move on to working out how much a certain number of moles of a substance will weigh. So for instance, how much would five moles of carbon dioxide weigh? So that's the next video.